where well guys we have got eddie as known as viridian city so let's put it out this way where did you get the name viridian city from um for, i'm looking at the stream viridian underscore city that's interesting yeah i can't it, I, 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 I can't brother. i can't spell okay uh difficult spelling okay I, I, I you know is there a largely <laughs> forgettable city because you versus Giovanni, and Giovanni's got ground Pokemon, and I always pick fucking Bulbasaur, so like Venusaur's just like, <laughs> you know, just one shot yeah, everything and can't, forget. yeah, you know. And then you yeah, realize that you realize that Nido King's a fucking poison Pokemon. You're just like, you know, waking up, <laughs> <laughs> like he did die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, the name's from my brother. Like, kind of yoinked his name ages ago. Wow, and you know, just shortened it, Viridian. Funny part is, I actually yoked my brother's name ages ago, but in the end he oh. got it back in the end as well. But uh, Josh yeah, and Josh so and Jose has been mine, so yeah. yeah. So how do you think that game went against Deadweight? Because Deadweight was probably the second seed and probably the other team that potentially could have beaten Art of War. So how did that go? Like, you know, how do you feel like mm. the video free went? I think it was fine, a lot more comfortable. Like, we played Nuke early on the playoffs, but we just didn't really played as often but coming into this matchup we were a bit more prepared mm -hmm. um, a bit more comfortable we just had to fix up the little things and like fix up the fundamentals um, yeah. but yeah that was Nuke and then Ancient Ancient's Ancient for us yeah um, yeah so pretty comfortable in Ancient I yeah. would say actually how's it been like I guess say because obviously we both played you know Observer as well how was the event like you know for I think it was which ones do you observe in the end obviously Melbourne what other events do you observe uh, Melbourne yeah yeah Mac Melbourne, I did I am Sydney, mm -hmm. and then there was that E-Flare Asia tourney. Yep. Um, and then sometimes the uni tourney for practice, but yeah. Yep. Uh, it's, it's a good, it's a very fun experience. You learn all the tools and all the different software. Even for the Dallas one I just worked on recently, like I had to learn two different things, two different tools and software to make the content, that type of thing. But yeah. Yep. yep. Um, how's it been so far? Like, you know, which observers have you met so far? I know you've met Chev and MC. Any of the other big observers you've met? Yeah, I was working with J Raz mainly for I Am Sydney and um, the other one. He does the cinematic stuff. Yeah. And then I do like the main hub stuff. Yeah. But yeah, like they're all amazing. Like, really amazing people. Very mm -hmm. talented. What did you learn a lot about observing in particular? Like, what was the big thing you learned about observing? Uh, uh, it's like you have to have a different perspective. Like there's a perspective when you play and mm -hmm. then when you watch demos to like learn theory stuff like that and then to actually like show stuff on screen like mm -hmm. for the audience to you know like you have to build a story with that in a way you have to yeah. make sure the context is correct so the audiences are confused that type of thing and then for the melbourne event you had the element of the crowd too so mm -hmm. like adding the crowd in the fact that it would kind of influence on who you would select for your controls yeah. but yeah yeah mm -hmm. Also, with this team in particular for Art of War, okay? Yep. So, obviously, ECL's almost in grasp. Okay? Yep. I don't actually gotta say, like, you know, which which teams do you feel like is the biggest threat in Open to, to you going um, into ECL? Honestly, I think... For, like, the standards in my head, at least, I think the biggest threat is just ourselves, like, in terms of... Mm -hmm. If we lose games, we kind of just lose to ourselves. That's how I kind of feel like it. Because, like, we have a lot of experienced players. Um, mm -hmm. I think we've maybe lost two games earlier where we were just, like, low comms, that type of thing. Some yeah. teams actually, like, they've been, like, they have good strategies. Like, um, Deadweight, they had some nice rounds on Nuke, like, mm -hmm. the A hits. Yep. Um, so the teams are showing the good stuff, but, like, the way we react in game should be pretty solid enough to easily kind of like find the holes in their their gameplay yep um but for the finals like let me just double check the potential playoffs yep um it could be anyone obviously deadweight is still in uh dupa egg blitz mm -hmm. underground dink easy riders easy riders is like a fun team to verse mm -hmm. uh lelux i don't know much about that team but it seems like they're doing pretty good. Yeah, they've, they've been upsetting some very good teams. Like, they like they had a few of them come and chat because they were playing another team, which they won. I uh, think they lost. That's why they got to the lower bracket. Because one of the players had a power outage. And, like, it was very close. And then they just fell off because they had to put in their sub. So they're a fairly uh, good team. Like, they were doing very good on Anubis. And then, obviously, fell flat when they have had to get their sub in. 
But um, I'd yep. say all those teams could be a threat to you basically as well. Like, you know, if you don't have a good day, they could just pounce up. Yeah, we pretty much have to just like, especially like at this stage with the grand finals yep. now, it's just you have to go straight in with good comms and just make sure your aim's there, warm up, that type of thing. Um, uh, yeah, you just have to like show up on the day. You can't just like go in slow. If you do go in slow, sure you lose the first map, but you have to like focus up for the second and third. Yep, okay. Um, now, now yep. a good question, Eddie, okay? Because I'm not gonna like to roast Neo, yep. okay? Who is the worst player on your team and why is it Neo? Neo, worst player? Yep. Um, I would say. Uh, <laughs> Don't answer, don't answer it, don't answer it, don't answer it, don't answer it, I was just no, troll, no, no, I was no. trolling. I'm, I'm shifting, I'm shifting the worst player <laughs> to myself, because my aim has not been, uh, not been the best. But it's fine, like, <sighs> I'm still coming, I guess. Neo's yep. popping off, everyone's just popping off, they have their pop off moment. Yep. They have good inputs in the round, that type of thing. <laughs> I love that, I love, I love banana, okay? I didn't realise that Tukey triple six was banana, so I just kept referring to him as yeah. your devil spawn, basically, he's got the triple six in his name. <laughs> The Donk reincarnation. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know. <laughs> he swapped his. He, did, he pulled a Boris though. He swapped his mouse recently. Oh no. He, he was. It, the confidence wasn't there on the first map, but I think. Do you have to get I'll the? Do you have to get the mouse uh, mouse pad out for him so it's got the borders, the natural borders, and the scuffed mouse pad? Do you have to get it out for him so he just doesn't oh, run his mouse up? No. <laughs> uh, if he has, I'll just replace his mouse pad at that point. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing with that. Actually, I was going to say, you know, yeah. obviously your team's just been put together with a bunch of veterans and stuff like that. What do you say to with teams that are a bit below you and whatnot? You know, how do you how do you think the best approach to do is to teach these teams on how to get to your level or above your level? To progress? Yeah. Uh, I would say just focus on fundamentals. I think, like, in the past, I've been on teams where you, you watch, like, an EU round or, like, some top team strategy and you try and copy and paste it in your own gameplay, but, like, you start focusing on the strats instead of the actual like game you're not playing counter-strike mm -hmm. at a certain point it's like you're so focused on a notebook or like just a whole strat book mm -hmm. where you just don't react to what the enemy's doing so uh it just comes down to fundamentals how you react to certain things happening across the map and that makes you a stronger player alongside your comms mm -hmm. like if you have good comms it's just night and day like a lot of upsets happen because one team's just coming 10 times more than the other team even though the other team on paper is better it's just more but, of a it's just more of a yeah they know what they're doing, but they don't know why they're yeah. doing it. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So like they need to drill in their protocols and reactions, like both individually and just as a team of your rotations. What, like, uh, what would you think about yeah, um, doing that. first? Like what do you address first? Do you address fundamentals, like your own mechanical skills? Or do you address uh, like the team stuff within yourself or team based like, as a team? For, for this team in my head, we might yep. not have like executed the the way I wanted to but like in my head I just wanted to like focus on the fundamental stuff like I don't even care if we don't have strats we'll just hop in a scrim right and just like see where the holes are in our comms or just like uh -huh. basic individual reactions that the players can improve on because like if you have a beast site anchor yeah like especially in ESA open no one's really gonna test that player too well mm -hmm. unless they have like crazy flashes or like good um, good util good good spacing that type of thing but like most of the teams they have a lot of holes in their actual mm -hmm. executes so i would say it's just like focus on the fundamentals uh just hop in a scrim see how people work with each other mm -hmm. and work up from there start introducing strats like a default and then build your strat book yeah but like pretty much like building from space one improve everyone's mechanical skills then you build a strat book that works yeah. to you and then you build more strat books of course you need to have like 20 times defaults because uh, I remember reading a tweet yeah, from exactly. a tweet of Kojimo's from a liege, and a liege sent him an email of the entire mm -hmm. fucking ancient, and he was just basically going yeah. through fucking everything, being like, "Bro, you need more defaults. Everything's telegraphed and shit like that." It's insane. Yeah, um, but yeah, like, uh, there's also teams that just like full info dump their players, mm -hmm. and like players stop playing comfortably, that type of thing. Then their mechanical skills drop. Mm -hmm. It's like your n number one priority should be that your players are comfortable. And yep. so if you just work from the ground up with your fundamentals and then work into strats, explain why the strats uh, happen, then yeah, it's a it's a bit, it's like a lot better than just copy and pasting stuff without yep. knowing why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, you know, what do you think about your favorite player, TJP? Oh, TJ is a, uh, what a question. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, we gotta, we gotta wrap it out now. I'll wrap it out now. TJ wants it wrapped <laughs> up. Now keep going. <laughs> 
No, it makes you laugh. TJ is a good guy's sharp. Makes you laugh. He gets things done. Yeah, messing around. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Also, I gotta say, what do you say to all your fans? You know, for supporting you and whatnot. Not really just from your observer, but being a coach from Mind Freak as well. You know, with BB Arn, being playing for Rooster. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. you've been in a lot of different teams. Like, you know, what do you say to your fans and supporters and whatnot? Because you're in a very good position uh, now. Yeah, for sure. I'm very grateful because, like, passions with Counter Strike, obviously, and it all comes down to the support around me to help lift up that kind of career, if you want to call it career. Mm -hmm. uh, but like the support is just top tier. Like when I stream, people in chat chill. You know, watching the stream stuff like that. It's very, very lucky. Oh very yeah, lucky what, what's, what's your stream by the way? You type that in chat. Like you know, for if anyone wants to follow in particular, to get know, know more about more uh, Eddie the Observer, the coach from Mind Freak in particular as well with the female team, uh, and also their player. Yeah, just Bowser Zero. That's the stream. Mm -hmm. Shameless plug, but there you go. Yeah, of course. It's a it's a it's a setup plug. I hand pass it to you, and you know you put it up. Okay. Um, also about Good Mind Freak in particular. Like, how was that as a coaching experience? Because obviously it was a different role because you used to be a player, Ooh. but coaching BBR and whatnot. Yeah, Mind Freak, like the whole women's team for Impact. That was like very unique experience because mm -hmm. like it really just came down to understanding how people like learn, how they react to each other, or like how they talk to each other, mm -hmm. and how you can help them develop um i think one of the hardest parts in that yep. team was having five players who were, had their schedules like free like there were so many times where i had to sub in for games or players had work mm -hmm. that type of thing and like it's fair enough because in australia you don't really have like a salary to justify yeah all the time to commit so you just got to use the time you can but the hardest thing was um just getting five people on for the day or like consistently mm -hmm. and um getting good practice in but yeah, it was like very fun experience. Learned a lot. Like I would go into demos, look at certain things for the whole team. Mm -hmm. How to develop the strap book and how to communicate. Communication was like the most important mm -hmm. um, aspect of everything. Funny, funny yeah. thing is, the first part of that question was exactly the same as ADK's answer when I interviewed him. It was like more of like right. knowing the players and whatnot and what helps them and how to help them basically as well. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So I gotta say, like you know, everyone learns in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, how was the experience of winning, um, what was it, the qualifier in NA? That one out of nowhere where you, oh, I'm trying was, to figure you took it off. Who, who, who did you wild. beat? Um, Forget. Beat, uh, um, what's that South African, what was, was it, South, wait. Oh, either way, how was the feeling, I okay? I, I don't remember either. I, oh, I thought it was it, amazing. I thought it was Shimmer for some reason, uh, but I'm like, it's not Shimmer. No, it, it was, um, I, I forgot. All right. come to me but um anyway yeah so like we had the two weeks beforehand for boot camp thanks to mj the actual beast and like since there was an impact qualifier for yep. the valencia tourney mm -hmm. we had we just we may as well play that we had like perfect situation we had the internet cafe like all booked out for us um yep. oh like for the boot camp i remember and that video we, coming we just, around like, as well tourney. yeah yeah and i still have like the vods of everyone's reaction like just mm -hmm. i recorded all the games just on unlisted but like it was amazing we're just beating through all the na teams uh we're just like australian representatives just going um mm -hmm. playing the games and then just qualifying for another event so it was like so surreal our reactions were just i don't know it was that's just the stuff you play for it was amazing do you feel like you have um, more of a future yeah. being a coach or are you gonna go digging more into the observer role now uh, i think priority is still player like the observer mm -hmm. stuff is just if it pops up schedules free yep. pretty sick um because yeah obviously like you gotta get income somehow yeah um but yeah like i'd still say main priority player and then depending on how big the opportunity is for other stuff i'll consider but coaching would probably be towards the back end at this point in time <laughs> yeah yeah um, i actually completely forgot about opportunity that opportunity too I totally forgot about the player part in particular. <laughs> Actually, talking about that, yeah, how's yeah. your experience on various other teams? You had this part in your career as well, where like you're just floating between yeah. teams, like you float towards Rooster at one stage oh, like, and really just filling, filling in. in. Yeah. Yeah, that was like the Rooster, that was the point of Rooster. And then after that was like, I just, just playing sub roller for, oh no, it was Eliminators, right? Yeah. And then it was just like sub roller for Sunday School and Vantage. Yeah. Uh, it's really good experience, like learning about 
all the different players and how they play or communicate you mm -hmm. kind of get an idea on how our teams function like especially like playing with rooster yeah. was pretty amazing i think it was like probably the top probably topic or counter strike experience mm -hmm. confidently i can say that but um it's just like kind of like the way they play and how everyone moves there's like little chances of error happening in that team and then other teams like uh specifically with uh what are you thinking like do you mean vantage or uh, either one like you know any any specific experiences like did they teach you it if you different or anything like that or learn different styles of uh, being an rgl um, yeah i guess so like every single time you play like an official you just learn a little bit more and more mm -hmm. um but when you're filling in for teams and not really cracking it just comes down to like learning individually yeah it's like you can't really just like have the role to just start leading the team it's just not how that works you just come and fill in for a game mm -hmm. uh practice what you're learning that type of thing um yeah and yeah like it's it's fun because you learn about all the different players that's like the main thing oh no what, what, experience. what i what i what i meant by that question is like do you learn off the other igls and what you could add and stuff like that that's what i meant by that question <laughs> Uh, yeah, like for Vantage, we had Skullhunter as a main IGL. Sunday school, a bit different, a bit loose. Like, I was probably, like, if I was feeling I was calling a lot of rounds, depending on the game. Um, but, yeah, you just learn about how the different teams function, their structure, I would say. Anyways, I've got to wrap it up here in particular. Do you want to shout out anyone before, um, before you um, head off? Shout out, uh... Shout out everyone supporting. Shout out the Outer War team. We're going to lock in for the finals and hopefully qualify. And thank you for covering the games. Really appreciate it. It's nice, nice having these games covered. And yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I think only it. covered 10 minutes of it, to be fair. But love to have you uh, on in particular. Still, still. I've been trying to snipe you for a very, very long time. I, I can't <laughs> I can't wait for you to get into ECO, okay? I can't wait for it anymore. So I just like, not get it now, oh, okay? Yeah, hopefully. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Anyways, yeah, will you be sticking out, sticking around for the Tyloo versus the Cube game? Tyloo versus the Cube. Wait, what's this for? The is ECL. Cube. Yep. Is it on HLTV? Yeah, yeah, it's on HLTV. It's coming up in about four minutes. That's why I have to wrap up this interview. Oh, I see the Cube. I haven't heard of the team before. The yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a Mongolian team, a young Mongolian team. They have a pretty good nuke, and they beat negative seventy-two degrees basically. Oh, okay. I haven't seen their names before. Yeah, neither have I. Two and Silimo. I think. And I think. Interesting. I think two did play the major. I was told by Thursday that they did, but that's pretty much it. Right. Uh, I don't know about the Tyler lineup right now, so it'd probably be like a decent game. Mhm. Mm Anyways, uh, I don't know if Tyler's too strong at the moment, but yeah. Anyway, thank you. Thank for you for having me on. Thank you for being here, man. And we'll get to the Tyler game very shortly. But guys, make sure you follow Eddie on both YouTube. I believe it's Theory YT on YouTube and Bowser Zero on Twitch. Make sure you follow him. He's going to be a great observer, coach, player, all at the same time. He's going to replace MC. Watch out for your job, Michael. No, I cannot do that. No, <laughs> MC, top tier. Yeah. Anyway, see you guys later. Yeah. Yeah. See ya, see ya.